Hello everyone. This presentation was first delivered by Iris Barthia, Chief Operating Officer of KEMA at Cambridge Wireless CW Tech Conference last month. This video contains information from the original talk by Iris. The main thing to remember when it comes to network planning is, if we don't build the best network, we won't get the best return on investment from it. There are many different interpretations of what an optimal network is, and intelligence is helping us create precise models that inform network planning decisions. The video playing in the background shows an automated design of a 5G public safety network in Portland, US. We can see in the video 5G links and line of sight areas, different elements that can form a HetNet, even some IoT, and some of the data sources that we must use to understand how many sites we need, their configuration, and where we need to place them. So when we are planning a modern communications network, we are influenced by a large number of independent factors. As you can see from the slide, all these must be considered during the business case evaluation, since they both inform and define our strategy. The earlier we include these different dimensions into the design, the more precise will be the plan and the shorter the time to deployment. Here is a quickly summarized workflow for the HetNet auto design process to illustrate the complexity we face when planning a modern communications network. As you can see, there are multiple dimensions that have to be evaluated, and as new data is available, the model is reinforced. However, the computational complexity of applying a multi-dimensional approach manually is impractical. KEMA has achieved this goal by using automation and changing the traditional way the networks have been planned. Instead of planned networks that were focused on providing coverage, they are now designed for capacity. This graph basically means that transmission parameters that influence throughput, modulation and coding schemes are dependent on the conditions of the radio link. This has huge implications for network design and ultimately the understanding of the performance and ROI of the network. Just very quickly, the users located closer to the site will enjoy the highest throughputs. So we need to locate cells close to the users we need a very good understanding of demand to dimension user clustering. But then in areas of high demand, we will need more cells. The cells will interfere with each other, which influences the throughput users can get. So we need an accurate estimation of interference. For that, we need an accurate model of how signal propagates. And we can only achieve that if we have a precise model of the environment. Fast forward to 2018 and we add new challenges from 5G. For example, with massive MIMO, the best radio link conditions, best throughput, may not be for the user closer to the cell, but the key elements that we have to model precisely, environment signal, demand, still remain. The first thing that is needed to model precisely is the environment. This influences our understanding of signal and interference. So when we digitize the environment, the maximum quantization error we can introduce is a fraction of the cell radius and the link adaptation thresholds. Acquiring this data has typically been very expensive, but it was also often found that it didn't meet the resolution and quality requirements. So the team at KEMA decided to build their own models for internal use and overture. And as anyone working with data knows, that is a huge task. They have to work with multiple data sets that require a large amount of scrubbing. They have to collect the data, validate it, clean it, merge it, and as new data is available, ensure models are updated as well. This ranges from road information, vegetation, heights, buildings, roadways, fibre routes.
Hamer have developed learning propagation models. This means that given the real measurements from the network, the model is capable of adapting the propagation to the environment. The use of the network measurements as training data and the process is presented as a workflow that includes data scrubbing. For example, correction of GPS errors, classification and reporting to expose the variance and bias of the model. Autocorrect are data-driven decisions by the operators supporting their strategy and engineering teams. The models are capable of identifying errors in the network configuration data held by the operators and correcting them. A very precise model of demand is also needed. Low resolution could skew the designs, so it is necessary to find data sources that would give a very accurate location. Using the cloud helps achieve continuous update build statistical relevance and provide seamless integration. This is the same as the environment model, where there is no single data source capable of conveying the multiple dimensions to include in the design, demographics, applications, etc. And that information had to always be geolocated. Cable were the first to use social networks information to model demand. However, social network information was just part of the picture. Also used was crime data for public safety designs, events data, for example, for the Super Bowl, and of course, network data and census, etc. Moving on to a more detailed real-life analysis. Since fixed wireless has been one of the first implementations of 5G, some analysis shared here bring together the concepts that have been described previously. This particular slide has been borrowed from Andy Sutton of BT because it is a great illustration of the concepts behind 5G connectivity and densification in the future. Since this is part of the workflow, it doesn't require any manual pre-processing and is triggered from the option showed here. In day one, this analysis has evaluated close to 90,000 households and validated close to 50,000 5G fixed wireless connections. Kema have brought this illustration into real life with the analysis of a whole country in the US, both for urban and rural areas, where the type of systems available could be like the ones shown on the left. This business case involves the analysis of every household within the country. This picture on the right hand is just a summary of the average values, but the operator has information about the bitrate, RSSI, latency, etc., per each single address. This is deterministic analysis, subject to the precision of data, but the intent is that business decisions are as close as possible to the real deployment. Existing macro locations hold core hubs, while edge computing hubs are located in buildings that have been selected by the model based on their properties, such as connections, location, deployment, availability, etc. A series of tiers are then defined. Meta heuristics are used to drive the decisions based on key performance variables and each decision also considers previous results.
Metaheuristics also helps identify wide connectivity opportunities, for example, between neighboring addresses. By integrating both the business and deployment considerations, we start bringing closer areas historically apart. Decisions can be made based on a holistic view of engineering, operations, market variables and timescales. From the top level, large scale, long term, to the detail of the accessibility and installation. There is no doubt that automation is part of the future of network design, giving humans the opportunity to focus on core business decisions by eliminating repetitive, non-valuable tasks. What the future brings is exciting and it will look like magic, but first we have to break some old barriers. Thank you.